If you thought I would let a year pass on this channel without doing a yearly makeup favorites video, then think again. How could I not I have done yearly favorites videos on this channel since 2010? I kept a very detailed Word document this whole time with every single favorite from every single year in. And of course I have to add in my 2022 beauty favorites. So that is this video. As always, there'll be coming onto the screen with all of my favorites over the years so we can reminisce, it's a little bit of nostalgia as well, but let's get cracking. Number one, primer. We've had some good ones over the years. I mean, it started off with Benefit the Professional, like what a classic. I love when I'm on TikTok and I get served like 2010 beauty YouTube kind of roundups. It just always cracks me up with all of the products. I'm like, oh my gosh, I had that. Oh my God, I really wanted that. But for the last three years and for this year, it's been Glossier Future Do. I know they market this as skincare, but to me, it's the first step of my beauty routine post SPF. And I just think it is the juiciest, dewiest primer in the land. If you are dry, you will love this. If you are not dry, you're probably not gonna be a fan. I really like mixing it with my bases. So that's what I'm gonna do today, but you could just apply it. I literally take one pump, one pump, is more than enough for the whole face. I'd avoid any areas that you do get a little bit oily in throughout the day. The second category, foundation, is perhaps my favorite to go like back through. Guerlain Lingerie de Peau. That foundation was absolutely cracking. Gemma Kid Light is there. Still miss it now, can't talk about it. The Armani Luminous Silk, that became a favorite in 2013. It's still a product I use 10 years later. I've still got a bottle, it's fab. There are some good ones. You know what, MAC Face and Body, which was one of my favorites in 2021, was really, really close to making it into this video as well. So, I mean, I feel like it'll come as no surprise if you've watched any of my videos in the last year, but the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint, I use this in the shade ST8. I've experimented a little bit with shades. I think previously I was using ST6, but ST8 is just a really nice, felt like um, the previous shade I was using was making me look a little bit more red. I don't wanna look red, like I'm not I'm not about the post box life. I always want something that's a little bit cooler on the skin, um, and this is a better shade match for me. And then the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, Mm, mm, mm. Two brilliant, brilliant, brilliant bases that I think I will have in my routine for years to come. This is new release last year. This I had previously used, but sort of slept on. I like used it in a video kind of two, three years ago and was like, yeah, it's nice. Maybe a bit too dewy for me, but I am all about the glow. I need glow. Like I need glow by the bucket load in my life now. And I think I might go for this today. I'm actually not gonna mix this with Glossier Future Dew because it is glowy enough on its own. But if I was to use the NARS, I'd put a pump of the Future Dew in it. Just gonna take this kind of over my cheeks and a little bit on my nose. And then I take a brush and blend it all over. I just feel like that is a good match. That is a good match. I know on my channel sometimes <laughs> I do some real dodgy shade matching, but I feel like that just blends in so effortlessly. When I look at all of my concealer favorites, I look down the list and I'm like, I would still use every single one of those today. It's like over 12 years later and really nothing has changed <laughs> with my makeup taste. However, there is a favorite that I'm carrying over from last year, the Dior Forever Skin Correct. Brilliant, brilliant concealer. Very similar to NARS um, Creamy Concealer, but I'd say a little less drying. I can sometimes find that one just like a little bit too much coverage, a little like tiny bit too drying, especially during the winter months. However, this is a little bit creamier, but still has quite a decent coverage to it. So I really enjoyed this in the summer, just kind of applied where I needed it and then like blended all out. I use the shade 2N by the way, which is like a really good match for me, especially in the summer months. But basically just wearing this on its own is like a bit of a concealer foundation hybrid. Now I know that this is a new find and I hate putting favorites into these videos that I like just found in like the final quarter of the year. However, the Ilia True Skin Serum Concealer, I'm using the shade SC1 today, Chicory. It's such a glorious concealer. And I don't see enough people talk about this. It's It's got that slip to it that you want in a concealer where it just melts into your skin, but it still has quite a medium-ish, like a light to medium-ish coverage. Um, I've also, I used up the RMS Beauty concealer this year and really, really liked that. Um, that's been a favorite for quite a few years. Mm. 
Glossier Stretch I still use. So there's a lot on this list that I'm still using, still loving, but if I had to pick, <laughs> well, if I had to pick one, that's kind of the whole point of the video, but I just had to go between these two because they're slightly different. Now, I haven't had a powder favorite since 2019 when it was the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish, which it had basically been for the majority of the time I had made these videos. And I took a bit of a break with powder. I don't know if my skin was just feeling a little bit more dry. I obviously just like, love glow like I don't mind my skin looking a little bit oily I'm kind of completely okay with that but this year I found a powder that sets but actually still makes you look really glowy at the same time kind of like MAC Mineralize Skin Finish actually although I feel like that has a little bit more coverage to it and also I understood that sometimes on camera like I can look like you could fry an egg on my face <laughs> and actually if I'm like filming TikToks for the day or I'm just doing something for the day where I'm like actually I just a little bit of powder like not a lot just a little tiny bit and that powder was the Armani Beauty I think it's called the Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder um, I'm using this in the shade 4 it looks a little something like this they do multiple shades there's something for everyone I take it on a Spectrum and KJH03 brush and I just take a tiny little dab and just set like my chin around my nose and under eyes and a little bit on my forehead as well. For the third year running, I have no contour favorite. Um, it's just not a product that I reach for daily. I have the Westman Atelier stick. They've now bought it out in more shades, which is great. I've still got my Kevin Aquan somewhere like tucked away, but it's just not a product that I reach for on the daily. I feel like I've been swimming around in the bronzer space. There's lows down the list here. Oh my gosh, Nars Laguna bronzer. Oh my word. The bourgeois chocolate bronzer. Like, oh, that is like 2010 beauty YouTube, like wrapped up with a bow. Loved that stuff. Last year I had the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze Perfect Tan, mainly, mainly just because I was trying to use up the compact um, and I still haven't got to the bottom of that one. I've sort of been waiting for a new favorite and I, I have found that in the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in the shade Light Medium. I feel like when I first reviewed this, people were going crazy about it and I was like, I mean, it's nice, not really sure I get the hype. I've used it every day since I've got it. I ordered it when it wasn't available in the UK, I ordered it off of his site. You can do that, I've just ordered the foundation. Let me know if you'd like to see a review. It's kind of like the Chanel Cream Bronzer. However, it comes in a load of different shades. It's got a balmy feeling. It doesn't dry down on the skin at all. It really remains quite tacky. Mm, tacky is the wrong word, but it remains a little bit slippy on the skin and it just, oh, and it just does everything. Like, can you see it's sculpted? It's added a bit of warmth. And for me, who just wants to get ready in the morning in like literally five minutes, this is such a great product. Can do a little bit under the chin. Me and Blush, we've been on a ride. There were a few years here where there was nothing. I was like, no, nothing has rocked the boat. Last year, we had the Vive Sunset Blush in Pesca. Like that is such a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous shade. However, this year, you know what? It's another recent find, but I've become really obsessed with it very, very quickly. And it's from Ilya again. Like, I'm a fan. Like, I'm such a fan of this brand. And the Multi Stick in Whisper. And um, I bought this off of the Sephora website, completely blind. Like, the swatches on the Sephora website were terrible. However, I really lucked out with this. This feels very, to be fair, very Mac Melba very tart Amazonian clay in tipsy. Like it's got that brightening coral feel to it. I personally like to apply it to my hands, get a little bit on my fingers, rub it in and then press it into my cheeks. And it just, there's just a little bit, it's just a little bit, nothing too crazy. Very like the cloud paints as well. Did the cloud, yeah, the cloud paint in dusk. Yeah, this feels very cloud paint in dusk with a little bit more orange in it. This is the first year where there is no highlighter favorite. <gasps> Controversial. I actually still have the Chanel Essential Balm and Sculpting. Um, I really like the Merit um, highlighter stick as well. Like I love a stick highlighter. I feel like we transitioned to those in 2017 and we really haven't looked back. I have no interest in a highlight powder. Like that to me, too heavy, too obvious on the skin, sits on the skin, not a fan. More than enough glow on these cheeks. Like I don't need it. Continuing on the theme with not having a brow pencil favorite either, mainly because I'm all about the brow gel these days. Um, I'm still into the Patrick Tarr. It's just so good. I've tried so many new different 
brow gels this year and just none of them, none of them compete with this. It's always out of stock. So when I see it in stock, I buy like three. <laughs> I haven't put an eye primer favorite this year. Again, the first year where I just haven't had one. It would still be the NARS Pro, <laughs> Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base, which has been a favorite for officially 10 years. I still have that. That's the one eyeshadow primer that I actually have in my stash, but I just haven't used it. My favorite eyeshadow will come as no surprise. It's been my favorite eyeshadow since 2019. And actually, if we go back, I'd say this warm brown thing kind of started in 2013 with MAC eyeshadow in sober, like what a color, love that, still own that. 2016, like MAC eyeshadow in saddle, it started to get a little bit warmer. 2017, Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow in caramel, still have that, it's fab. But it is still the Giorgio Armani eye tint in the shade 23. Look how used this is. Like when I get it out, I genuinely like scrape the side to get it out. <laughs> Word on the street is that this has been discontinued. I cannot find this online anywhere. It is not in stock anywhere and it hasn't been for the year. Like I've needed a new one for probably like the last 12 months. I've spoken to the official people and they've told me that it, it's not. And they're like, it's still around somewhere. However, I haven't been able to find it. So um, I will continue to try and look for this shade in this product because I just think it's the best, <laughs> just the best eye product ever. But is it discontinued? Who knows? In terms of an eyeshadow palette, this one made me laugh because although I'm gonna show you an eyeshadow palette here, it's basically for one color. <laughs> <laughs> which defeats the whole point, but I don't own any single eyeshadows. Aside from this, this is it. I don't have any single eyeshadows. I just feel like it's a little bit of a waste of time. Like it takes up so much space for like one tiny little product. And I have a few palettes that I can like mix and match and work between. And between those, I can basically get like any color that I personally would want to wear. So I've got the Beauty Pie James Malloy. I think it's called the Gold Eyeshadow Quad, but it is mainly for this shade. This shade is everything. It's so good. What did I put last year? Oh, the Makeup by Mario Master Matte palette. You know what? That would have been my runner up. Like the shades in there are just so, so nice. Really natural looking, really like everyday friendly for me. Just a great palette. But this shade, oh, it matches my cardigan. <laughs> I love such a nice texture as well. I did want to give an honorable mention to two NARS palettes as well. I've got the Afterglow eyeshadow palette stunning and the summer unrated palette and between these two with like that beauty pie palette and also the mario master mats palette i i can just do any look that i would probably want to do i definitely feel very catered for in the palette department I, I feel like i've got what i need for the sixth year in the row i don't have an eye pencil favorite it's just not a product category that I reach for. All that often, I still have them. I have the Glossier eye pencils and some like fun shades. I really like the Victoria Beckham ones. I think they're like the two that I have. I don't think I own any from any other brands, but like between those, I've got some shades if I wanna experiment in that area, but they're not something I use every day. However, mascara, mm, I've got a new favorite. I've got an old favorite. The Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill Wet Waterproof Mascara. Again, it's one of those products that goes a little bit off the radar. Sometimes I like can't find it in stock and then I panic and then I find it in stock and I buy like three. <laughs> Just such a good everyday, you can build up a little bit, but it's quite fluttery, natural mascara. However, the Beauty Pie, the perfect waterproof mascara is a new entry. It was released this year and it, it might be the perfect waterproof mascara. I'd say this is a little bit more volumizing. You can definitely like build it up a lot more than the Armani. Yeah, it's hard to get off because it's really, really waterproof. So I would definitely recommend some kind of waterproof specific eye makeup remover. It separates, it lifts, it's really, really beautiful. I'm gonna go with the Armani today, which has been a favorite since 2019. Oh, there's some really good ones in here. I just want something a little bit lighter today. I don't wanna to go too heavy on the eyes. Just that very fluttery, like, am I even wearing mascara look? That's what I fancy today. On to lip products, I'm very excited. I have a new category here. Ooh, however, lip balm. I'm still on the Augustinus Beta lip balm train. Like, it's so expensive and outrageous, but like, stick it on your birthday list. Like, even Mark says that this is the best <laughs> lip balm ever. And he's a frugal man, he is a frugal man. It's just really beautiful. I mean, it looks really nice. I always wear mine down into like this strange little nub 
shape. My lips are really dry right now, actually. But quite often I will leave it there. I'll be like, right, yep, got my lip balm on. Like, happy with that look, done for the day. I have not been really into lipstick this year. Like, I've got the Merit ones, the signature lips. I really like those. I actually wore the red one. I think it's called an aperitif. Um, I did a sponsored post with Selfridges and was wearing like a black dress and had a red lip on and it was that. So I'm like, oh, I feel like I found my red lip. That's really fun. I still like the Beauty Pie Nude Blush. Um, the Victoria Beckham ones are still really beautiful. I have those in my routine. MAC Lipstick and Yash is like a little bit too brown for me these days. Like whenever I put it on, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna wear Yash like the old days. I put it on, I'm a bit like, mm, I don't know. It feels a bit too like, lipsticky so i just haven't been really wearing lipstick i literally wear a lip balm or this lip balm <laughs> really this should have been in the uh, lip balm category it has a slight tint to it you know what i you know i said this was like the bougiest thing in my recommendations no this really is the hermes rosy tint lip enhancer you know the one i mean it's outrageous and there are so many products on the market that do the same thing like look like this and then you put it on your lips and it's just this kind of bright pink vibrant stain like the dior do it barry m did it back in the day did they still do it it was like a green lipstick anything that you see that's like that is very very similar to this however it's beautiful it's lovely and i do wear it a lot i prefer this is the pink one i've got the pink one and the peach one i'd say i prefer the pink one look at that just such a subtle tint of nothingness on the lips, but I really like it. For lip gloss, we've got a non-applicable. I still have that Rowan Liquid Lip Balm in Remy. It's a really gorgeous product. I've had it for quite a while now. <laughs> Should probably go give that a sniff, but it's just not a product I'm reaching for. I'm going for my lip balm. I'm going for my lip liner, which we're going to talk about. I'm not reaching for lipstick and I'm not reaching for lip gloss. However, new category alert stay with me lip liner i have never mentioned lip liners in this video at all ever which is kind of annoying because i bet was there some years i don't know i'm just i've never really been a lip liner person before i've always found it a little bit too much a little bit too glam like all oh, not for me but last year i discovered this the makeup forever artist color pencil in the shade 602 completely sepia. Like, how did I get into this? I think I refound this Kim Kardashian beauty one that I bought in Chicago, like 2019, and actually ended up using quite a few times. And I rediscovered it and that I could basically like overline my lips a little bit, put a bit of lip balm on, smush it in and have this like slightly plumped out lip, which I was feeling. So I got into that, started asking about your favorite lip liners. And I remember someone messaging me and saying that Hailey Bieber uses this one apparently, but I think in 600, and that one looked a little bit too brown. I think that I'm not 100% that was the code, but it was very similar to 602. And then I like had a little search around, found 602, which was a little bit more pink. And you know what? I absolutely love it. I just take it kind of over a lip balm sometimes or under a lip balm. And I'm just able to like beef out my lip line a little bit. And then I just blend it in with my finger and it just plumps everything out. And it's just a really, really nice color. If you want to do this, it's very dependent on just finding the right color for you. This is like a little bit peachy, a little bit pinky. It's not too brown. I didn't want anything too brown. Um, I just really, really like the finish of this. Just blend it into my lips a little bit more. And that's basically my everyday lip look. We do not have a makeup spray favorite. It's been a long time since I've used makeup spray. I feel like people are going crazy for the Charlotte Tilbury one. Do I need it? Is it is it good? I feel like actually I could probably benefit from a makeup spray because it would make my makeup last a little bit longer, but I would still get that glow. So let me know. I'm in the market. There you go. The final look. That's a nice shot. <laughs> Whoa, fish eye. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't miss a year. I could not miss a year. This is my thing. I love making these videos. I love looking back and seeing how some things change and some things really really don't at all but hopefully you enjoyed this video i will link everything down below for you hopefully you had a great start to the year and i will be back next weekend with a little a little actually quite a big renovation update because a lot has happened since we last spoke hopefully you haven't heard too much banging in this video hence why i am oh mic'd up these days so that will be with you next sunday but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon bye